things I focus on is helping people to get back to a place of hope. Hope. The morning show worth talking about. Faith at Work with Yvette Gavin. Hello and welcome to Faith at Work. I'm your host, Yvette Gavin. When our feelings are not in alignment with our thinking, cognitive dissonance occurs, according to psychiatrists and psychologists. This is the mental state of two opposing beliefs that play out in the emotion. When a person believes one thing, but does something that's against that belief. It's the separation of the heart and mind. When a person is feeling something that is in contradiction with how they think over a period of time, cognitive dissonance will set in. This is believed to be the root cause of depression, loss of vision and loss of dreams, stress, sadness, loneliness, and even suicide. In Romans 15, 4, Paul says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scripture and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Now, Webster Dictionary defines hope as the feeling that what is desired is also possible. A person in whom expectations are centered to believe, desire, or trust. The definition goes on to say to feel that something desired may happen. Paul knew that hope, the feeling that what we desire is possible, comes from God's word. As I continue to study the power of hope, Romans 4, 18 really caught my attention. And it says, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and became the father of many nations. Now the dictionary defines faith as belief in the trustworthiness or reliability or a person or thing. Another way of defining hope and faith is that hope is what you feel. Faith is what you know. To avoid cognitive dissonance, our hope, which is feeling, must be in alignment with our faith, which is what we know. When hope and faith are in alignment, purpose is fulfilled, dreams are realized, and we live our best lives. My prayer for you today is that your hope and faith are in alignment and that you continually study the scriptures to ensure that you never fall into cognitive dissonance. My guest today is corporate trainer, Sheila Farr. Sheila is a woman of faith who has experience in teaching others how to grow faith and increase their hope. Join me after this quick break for an informative and spirit-filled conversation with Sheila Farr. COVID-19 has changed the way leaders engage teams, and it has caused teammates to shift how they communicate. Effective communication is more important today than ever to a team's growth and overall success. The John Maxwell Leadership Game, implemented by Yvette Gavin Consulting, can help you lead your team into more effective leadership and communication practices. Schedule your workshop today. Call us at 424-262-2462 or email us at yvette at yvettegavin.com. The perfect way to start your day. Family, traffic, meetings, traffic, family, all can be stressors in our everyday lives, but spending a few minutes with God can prepare you to take on the world. The Faith at Work devotional is a perfect vehicle to do just that by helping you center on what's most important, your relationship with God. And now, for your donation of any amount, you'll receive a copy of the Faith at Work devotional. Just visit our website at www.faithatwork.tv. Welcome back, everyone. We're now on set with Ms. Sheila Farr. As I told you earlier, she is the CEO of the Gulf Coast Training and Education Services. Please help me welcome Sheila to the show. Hello, Sheila. Hi, Yvette. Thank you for having me today. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, so I want to get right into the work that you're doing. So let's talk a little bit about your training and consulting business. What inspired you to start it? 
Honestly, I found myself helping other people do some things outside of the my regular work day. Uh, so I had friends who were starting businesses and friends who were interested in starting businesses, and they didn't know how to get started. So I really just started helping other people start their small businesses. And uh, before long, I realized that that is actually what I love doing is uh, helping connect dots, helping build bridges for people, uh, helping other people succeed. That just really made my heart happy. So uh, I, I just felt like that's what I needed to be doing. And uh, about four years ago, we started the training center and uh, we've been going strong and growing ever since. Yes. And I can tell that you love what you do. I mean, I hear it when I watch you know, your trainings on, on YouTube and various other platforms. I see it in your face as you talk about the training and the consulting business. So awesome. You know, I, I know one of the things that you help people to do is to identify when it's time for a transition. So will you share with us maybe some signs that it may be time for a career change? Yes, absolutely. This is a, a biggie, too, because it's funny how you can often recognize this in other people, but you might have a hard time recognizing it in yourself, or at least I know that was the case for me. Uh, but definitely, if you are if you go to work with a sense of complacency, uh, you know, if you just don't want to be there and you're not really inspired by what you're doing, uh, if you feel like you're not appreciated at work or people don't listen to you or you just feel like, uh, your core values don't line up with the, the corporate core values or even the way that they do with their business. Um, that's another way. Uh, a third way, I think, is is if your heart just dreams of something bigger and better, uh, it might be time for you to explore making some changes. Yes, I love all of those signs. I know on a personal level, I identify with that last one. My heart was always dreaming and I felt it was pulling me into what I'm doing right now. You know, I remember my father saying to me, are you certain you want to quit this good paying job <laughs> to go and try to start your own ministry and, and do the training and the coaching? And I was like, yes, it was, you, I got to that place where it was like, I do it now or I won't do it, you know? Right. So made that transition. It's quite rewarding. And I think oftentimes we kind of have that false sense of security when we're working for somebody else, because we, you know, we get used to that direct deposit coming on a regular basis and we get used to the routine of things. But then I think, especially this past year, we've seen uh, what can happen when that gets interrupted and we're not prepared to do anything differently. Uh, so that's another reason why I really enjoy what I do. I'm thankful for the opportunity and I'm thankful to be able to help others do the same thing. That's, you know, you just said a word right there. That is so true. I think if, you know, the changes that took place in 2020, where people who really thought they had very secure jobs, they turned out, you know, they learned that, no, it wasn't as secure as they had once thought. And they weren't prepared, you know, to make a pivot or a quick change, you know, when COVID hit. So very good point. So I want, I know you talk about bearing talents versus cultivating your talents. So why do you think some people make the mistake in burying their gifts and their talents versus growing it, if you will? Um, fear. I think fear has a lot to do with it. I think uh, people get afraid to really be vulnerable and authentic with other people uh, because we do, we spend so much time comparing ourselves to other people and our businesses to other businesses. And a, a lot of times we'll model what we're doing off of what we see other people doing. And it's not really for us. So I think uh, uh, sometimes, or what I see most often is people will start a business uh, based on what they see somebody else doing without really giving uh, much thought or effort to taking time as we've talked about before, praying for things or even considering the type of work that they like to do, their behaviors and their preferences for work. So they'll see things kind of crumble and then they, you know, give up and then they're afraid to start over or do anything different because they still have that taste of fear in them from the last time. Um, so honestly, I think fear has a, has a lot to do with it. Yes. And, that, and, and I love what you're saying because I know there's tr so much truth there. It's like having that one failure sometime will cause people to build up a wall of fear and they're afraid to even try again. You know, one of the things I've noticed, and you know, you may have made the same observation, is that some people with like a year or two of work experience 
are going out, you know, becoming career coaches. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I feel like, you know, that phrase where my grandmother used to say, you know, that's still wet behind the ears, you know? And it's like with, with very little experience, I'm not trying to say that you cannot do it, but there's gonna be a lot of growth, of course, if you haven't, if you don't have that practical experience that you're able to sow and pass on to someone that perhaps that you're coaching versus someone who has 20 years of experience in working with others and helping them mature and grow, it's gonna be a difference, right? One has more to overcome than the other. Yeah, I think uh, especially with the with the younger coaches or, or now coaching is such a buzzword. You know, we, we've done it forever and we just now have really come to start calling it coach coaching within the past couple of years. But uh, it, it does take huh, it, it does take a, a bit of experience and it does take some insight and it does take some failure. It does. Uh, you know, in order to, to teach others, you know, not to do the same things and how to be successful. Um but, you know, I'd love seeing uh, a new generation of people come along and uh, get out there and try to do something independently. That's encouraging to me. Yeah. Um, and I, there are a lot of us kind of old timers that we can learn from them. We can learn a lot of technology things from them that we might not be savvy on. So uh, I, I think that there's always opportunity to learn some things. But I do think if somebody's trying to grow a business, you really need to learn from somebody who has done it. Yes. Uh, you know, that's an important to me. Yes, I totally agree. And of course, that's where you come in, right? Where you're able to help people to do that. So will you share with us perhaps a success story where you work with someone to start their business? Yeah, I, that's such, such a great, I love doing this. Uh, first of all, I'll say that I actually, two of my clients are former employers. Uh, so that that's a really big deal to me. And still to this day, and it, well, both of them I haven't worked with in over, well, I haven't worked full time for in over 15 or 20 years. Uh, I still do a component of their training in uh, operations for them. So I, I think that's a really, that's a big success story right there. But uh, most recently I had a, a person come to me and she, she uh, was, she's kind of at that age, not re really ready to retire, but not really wanting to work full time for somebody else because she just did not want the restriction of uh, the, just the time constraint. She wanted to be able to have some freedom, do things on her own, but she still needed to be financially independent. So, uh, you know, so we kind of looked at, at what fit her, you know, what her interest was. And she didn't have a clue what she wanted to do. Um, and it was really it was really a neat process because after just a short period of her kind of paying attention to the things that she enjoyed doing and the things that she really didn't want to do anymore, uh, she came up with the idea that she would love to be a pet sitter. Uh, and, you know, just take because she loves animals and she's always been an animal uh, advocate and she loves she's she takes exceptional care of other people. Uh, so she, her customer service skills are off the chart. Um, you know, so I just we looked at that with her and we really felt like we could make her just a really uh, unique and um, honestly just a dynamic uh, pet caregiver. And so she's been at that now since the first of the year, and she is so busy. I think she's about to have to hire a couple of assistants to do a couple of different facets of her job or of her work because she has kind of outgrown, you know, being her, her being a, a solopreneur. So that's really it, it's been so fun to watch because uh, I, I love uh, her passion. Um, you know, because she loves pets and she loves that. And she, you know, she loves taking care and she loves giving and she loves providing um, security for others. So th that was really a neat, a neat marriage of ideas and opportunities. And, and, you know, she's been very successful. So that's great. Yes. And I love how you were able to help coach her through that process of understanding what she enjoyed doing, still meeting her goals and objectives of being able to have that level of flexibility and still to be somewhat financially independent, right? Yeah. So excellent. Would you share with us a little bit more about the type of training that you provide, that you offer? Oh my goodness, we do. We have such a wide range of services that we offer now. And the reason that we do that is because, well, let me back up and say, initially, what we started doing as, as a training company was just doing compliance training. And uh, 
sort of medical front office customer service type things, because that's been my career is human resources and medical management. Um, so I just started really doing those things in the beginning. And then the need grow, grew. Uh, people wanted to do one on one. Well, can you look at my small business and operationally just tell me what I need to do? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And then uh, people asked me, uh, can you do well, I started writing books. And then they wanted to know, can you help me write a book? So I was like, yeah, I can do, you know, I can do a book workshop, you know, we could do these things. So as I would grow, and as I would add more things to my little bucket of tricks, I would offer those as training opportunities for people that were our clients and customers. And so now at our training center, um, we do everything from yoga, health and wellness courses, the business strategies, uh, business plan writing, compliance for any type of business, just about virtual HR services, uh, safety and Tai Chi. I mean, we just run a gambit of things and it, it, I'm having like, I think I told you earlier, I'm just having the best time ever because we are, we, we have such a beautiful opportunity to serve our community, you know, so we, we have the things that we do for training purposes that are our, our fee for service type activities, but we also do a lot of free training for uh, members in our community. So we do job training. Uh, I'm a literacy coach. So we do free literacy training at our uh, facility. So we're, we're really blessed to have the opportunity to do a lot of things. Yes. And I really hope that our viewers will, you know, go out to your website and take a look at the free training that you offer, because I think that is definitely a value added. And you don't see a lot of companies doing that. And so I thought that was very unique about what you do and how you go to market. When I saw that on your website, I was like, how amazing. I mean, you may see me in one of your trainings or one of your virtual training courses because I was really impressed with you and, you know, really great training that you're providing free to the community. So right. Yeah. I mean, we want um, I serve on uh, the board for the Human Resource uh, Association here in, in my city, uh, and I'm the workforce readiness director for that organization. So definitely I have a vested interest in uh, making sure that our community in the entire Gulf Coast here where I live is uh, equipped and ready to work. You know, and we want to see people be employed and we want to see people grow, you know, not just at those entry level positions, but up into management and beyond and, you know, starting new businesses. That's so exciting for the economy. So we really do whatever we can to, to foster that growth for, for our community. Awesome. And it's such a needed service right now. You Thank know, you. Such Thanks for saying service. that. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you know, for all that you're doing. I love how you shared, I'm going to refer to it as diversity, the diversity of the type work that you're providing, you know, to the community, which I feel goes along with something that I know that you, that you speak on, and that is how to upgrade your network. To me, that is uh, providing some level of diversity in your own network, right? It's expanding it out. And so I want you to share with us some why that's important and some tips. But I want you to wait because we have a quick break that we need to take. And if you would come back after the break and just share with us, what do you mean about, you know, upgrading your network, why it's important and how do we do it? Will you share those things with us? Absolutely. Awesome. So guys, you heard that. Sheila is going to help us upgrade our network and help us to understand why it's important to do so. So don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short break. Executive presence has nothing to do with skill and talent. Executive presence is a measure of image. Hello everyone, I'm Yvette Gavin, host of Faith at Work, a television show focused on helping women of faith to increase their kingdom influence in the marketplace. Tune in Mondays at 5.30 a.m. Welcome back. Right before the break, I asked Sheila if she would share with us why it's important and what does it mean to upgrade your network. So Sheila, why is it important? 
Yes, it's important because we want to stay green and growing, right? I know you've heard that phrase before. You want to stay green and growing. And whenever you're uh, working, you, you want to be looking around for people not so much to be in competition with, because really you should be in competition with yourself. You're striving every day to, to be the best that you can be. Uh, but look for people that you would love to collaborate with, because if you can team up with other people, you're able to serve a broader range of people. Your audience doubles then at that time, right? And that's the way to just keep multiplying blessings and multiplying information and bringing people into your fold and exchanging ideas and information. And that makes us so much stronger. So we're able to accomplish so much more when we upgrade our networks. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I'm always transparent. That's how we met. You know, I feel like I upgraded my network when I when I met Rita, honestly, and Kern and gave me an opportunity to meet you. So absolutely. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So what would yeah, that's, exactly. So what advice would you give someone who, who really ha have a heart to start their own business? But they feel as if there's just too many things in, you know, in front of them and they don't know what to do to get started. Um, the first thing I would do, and this is I, this is probably number one, and people often fail to do this, is I would say really spend some time getting to know yourself, um, getting to know how you operate, why you operate, um, and understanding the things that you do well and the things that you need help with, awesome. because that's going to make you such a stronger business person uh, because you're oftentimes I think people try to do it all themselves as an entrepreneur or a solopreneur, they get overwhelmed, they crash and burn without ever trying to ask for help because they, for, for whatever reason, and there could be a number of reasons, uh, you know, they, they might be on, like we talked about earlier, the wrong path. They might be trying to model themselves and their work after someone else instead of knowing really what are they gifted with? And, you know, what talents do they have that they need to be sharing uh, with others? Because sometimes you'll find that it's not what you think it is. So uh, that's the first thing. It's just spending time to get to know yourself. Uh, and I would say setting measurable goals and then not just setting those goals, but actually mapping out the plan of how you're going to achieve those goals. Uh, because oftentimes we know what we're going to do, but we sometimes fail to do uh, the how part. So be sure that you have those three components is, is a strong start. Yes, absolutely. Excellent advice. You know, one of the things one of the things that I thought of as I was listening to you talking about understanding what you're good at and what you may not, you know, may not be so good at. Right. And I thought about the SWOT analysis. I'm sure you've used that tool, <laughs> you know, or probably still, you know, using it with your clients. But also I was thinking about that strategy component, which is something that you're very strong, you know, at in helping others create that business plan. And, you know, the word teaches that, you know, write the vision down, make it plain and put it up where others can see it. And I see that whole business plan that you help others, you know, create and, and craft is doing just that, is putting it down on paper where you can really think through it, right? And then I see, it, I see the plan is also somewhat of a billboard in many ways as well, because you can actually then go back and see it. It definitely is. And another thing that it is or, or that it should be is a living, breathing document that grows and changes with your business. Because, man, I wish I had a nickel for every time I had somebody who, who came to me and, you know, I, I say, let me see your business plan. And they're like, oh, yeah, I did that like when I first formed my LLC, but I haven't looked at it since then. And it's in a drawer and it's way back here. And I'm like, how are you running your business? If you, you know, you don't, that's your, that's your guide. That's your map. That's your roadmap. That's your blueprint. So, you know, we, we dig it out and we revisit that, but yeah, you really, you have to, to know where you're going in order to get there. And oftentimes that's what I do with people. Um, sometimes when we get to those points where they, where they come to me and they're just frustrated because nothing works, you know? So I'm like, just give me all of your pieces and let's look at the pieces. We can make a mosaic with everything that you've got. We can do this, you know, we can build something beautiful out of all this brokenness. Uh, but let's start with where we're going. Let's start at the end and work backward. Uh, yeah, because that helps you. Oftentimes people 
they don't know how to get anywhere, but they oftentimes don't know where they're even going. Exactly. So, you know, understanding what your what your end game is, what you're shooting for. I mean, then you can build the bridge, right, to get exactly. to there. But if you don't know where you're going, how do you know how what you're doing? So. Yeah. And how will you know when you're there? You know what I mean? Because it's not just about making money. Right. It's also about fulfilling the full mission of it. Yes. And that's the beauty of, of business planning. Uh, and I'm kind of, I kind of do things differently. I, yes, I, I go by the, the old, the format that you have to have a business plan and all the financials. And, and, and I'm going to say blah, blah, blah. And that's going to sound like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> But it's just that we get so wound up uh, looking at so many of the um, oftentimes we don't really have the big picture. We try to get bogged down in those little details before we even understand the concept. So sometimes helping people connect in concept then helps filling in the, the little details so much easier because, you know, they have that overarching picture, but oftentimes they'll start looking, you know, at, at one piece of their business plan and, and it can be overwhelming, especially if it's not what you do, you know, and if it's, you know, if, if it's not what you love to do, it can be extremely uh, painstaking. Um, but th that's where you uh, rely on professionals who do that for a living and who have a passion to do that, to do exactly. that for you or to help you with that piece. Um, because I tell everybody, yes, you need to understand and you need to, to know your business better than anybody else. But there's going to be components of it that you haven't been exposed to yet. So you're not going to know or understand what that is until you get that exposure. So let's let's do this overarching thing and then we'll fill in the details. Or honestly, you, you know, the details oftentimes fill in themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. It's been so amazing talking with you today. I've actually learned some things from you. You, and I can't believe our time is up. You know, I, I cannot believe it. It's gone so fast. Now, before we go, I would like for you to just tell our viewers how they can reach you. And in that process, just share your favorite scripture. Ooh, um, my favorite scripture, I'm going to start with that, is uh, honestly, and you'll laugh when I tell you this, it's Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, because that just reminds me to stay focused on him and I will always have a mindset of abundance and not lack. So that's my favorite. And for anybody who wants to connect with me, they can do that. It's easy. It's through, I'm on social media, all over social media, but our website is www.gulfcoasttraining.org. Let me say it one more time. www.gulfcoasttraining.org. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sheila, for being here today and just blessing us with your knowledge and the things that God has implanted in you. Well, guys, I'm Yvette here today with Sheila, reminding you that faith, faith without, without works, works is, is dead. dead.